Okay. So I'll we'll start. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Dan Webb. I'm a platform engineer for Twitter. Uh, I've been there for about four months and ever since I've been there, I've been uh, part of the team that's uh, designing and building uh, a new product called At Anywhere. Um, At Anywhere, um, the whole idea of it is essentially to sort of help the Twitter and the Twitter experience like escape from the boundaries of Twitter.com. We obviously already have a REST API uh, and people have built you know, hundreds of thousands of applications on top of that. But um, the, uh, the, the objective of Anywhere is basically to um, allow you to put, uh, perform some common Twitter actions across the web as you're uh, on all kinds of sites and reading content. For instance, um, you, know, you'd be, you could be going to, uh, to tweet longer, find something particularly entertaining in a, in a verbose tweet, uh, if anyone likes verbose tweets. But, um, and then instead of, uh, you know, normally you click on the link um, on, uh, to this user, you'd head off to twitter.com, you'd click the button there, and then you'd have to find your way all the way back to where you were. And it's kind of interrupting your experience. So instead of that, we um, at Anywhere let you embed, uh, for, in this instance, a follow button so you can follow this person straight away. You click that button, you just uh, have to uh, give permission uh, for Twit Longer to act on your behalf and follow this person. Once you've done that, you don't see that again. And then uh, you're following that person, you can carry on um, looking at all the other verbose tweets on that site. Um, another thing uh, that we've built is, is this a tweet box. So you're reading something about um, how ginormous Facebook, Facebook's traffic is. Uh, you maybe just want to share that with people or you might want to make a comment about it. Normally you'd have to head over to Twitter or open up your Twitter client and actually um, make, do the tweet there, probably copy and paste the link in, maybe go to a URL shortener. You know, why not just um, do that straight within the page and then carry on uh, reading msnbc.com. Um, we've also uh, brought the uh, much maligned um, hover cards over as well. So, um, but uh, in the context of uh, a third-party site, they work quite well. If you see uh, a user mentioned, then you can just uh, uh, hover over their name, find all about them on Twitter, uh, follow them from there, and then just you know carry on looking at that site. Uh, the way we achieve all this is um, is by the um, as simple as possible JavaScript interface. So you just uh, include the JavaScript file, um, and then um, basically you just uh, switch on whatever uh, you need in the site. And now these are just the, the widgets, um, but actually there's a whole lot more underneath that. Um, actually, powering the widgets themselves, but also exposed to um, for developers to use, is a whole um, programmatic interface which essentially um, wraps the entire REST API. And this is the bit that sort of interested me the most, and I, and I, and I thought um, it's the part that you probably get the most out of. Um, so I was going to talk about building anywhere, but I, but I kind of discarded most of the other stuff, and I'm now basically going to be talk, talking about how you build um, cross-domain APIs, um, because there's, there's a hell of a lot of depth for that to cover in like sort of half an hour anyway. So about three or four months uh, we had this uh, ago, we had this project dropped on our plate and uh, we set about planning. And uh, this was our uh, incredibly structured waterfall style planning that we did um, in order to work out exactly how this whole thing goes together. Um, it has many, many boxes and arrows and scribblings and the word token written everywhere. Um, so I'm... Uh, but the thing is about this is that it took a hell of a lot of working out and drawing together sort of information and research from different places and learning hard lessons. And uh, today I just want to sort of take you through our experiences and, and, and you know, basically sort of show you the way that we've found to be the best so far. The, um, the overview is, um, firstly we'll talk about uh, cross-domain communication and all of the uh, fun and frolics that are involved in that. And hopefully I won't... Uh, cross over too much onto uh, Alex's talk later. Um, secondly, I'm going to talk about actually building like a remote procedure call layer on top of the cross domain stuff so we can actually call methods across our um, across domains and and then uh, after that um, we'll talk about how we wrap our uh, REST API with uh, in a way that can be accessed directly from JavaScript. 
And finally, um, talk about how we do uh, the authentication and authorization layer. So to start with, what we already had at this project is we, uh, we had our REST API, which is obviously well known. Um, it <coughs> lives on api.twitter.com. So the question was, if we're on uh, another site, say uh, MSNBC, how do we actually communicate uh, with this REST API that's uh, uh, api.twitter.com? Well, there's a huge problem here, and it's actually one of the sort of the most fundamental security features that browsers have. Um, but it's actually totally in our way in this case, which is very annoying. Um, it's the same origin policy, which I'm sure loads of you have come across. Um, it basically says that um, if your JavaScript is running uh, on, on um, a site with a certain domain, say msnbc.com, uh, it can only make AJAX requests and read uh, and communicate with the JavaScript of other frames if the domains match. Um, to illustrate this, uh, if you were to just send an XML HTTP request uh, from uh, this site to audio straight to abi.twitter.com, uh, it would fail because the uh, domains don't match. But um, what, what does work is if you have some page on uh, api.twitter.com and this server HTML, make the request from there, then because the domains match, um, you can do you can actually use the full REST API via uh, AJAX from there. So, um, is it actually possible to is it actually uh, possible to to bridge this gap between uh, Twordio, the site over here, and this uh, page on api.twitter.com? Well, yeah. But, um, step one, uh, we get out our first iframe of many. Um, so we embed the uh, server HTML straight into the um, into the Twordio, and that can be in a hidden iframe. So now we have uh, we have this frame, and it can talk, uh, and it can uh, make AJAX calls to API.twitter.com. Um, but we just need to make sure that that information can get from the server HTML iframe back out to the client site. Now, it can't just directly talk because um, the, the, the JavaScript can't just uh, reach in and grab values because they're on different domains. So, uh, the, the best way we have to achieve this is um, part of HTML5, which is called PostMessage. Um, PostMessage makes this whole activity quite trivial, really. Um, essentially, you can um, get this this uh, window, a ref reference to this iframes window, uh, call its post message and, and just send arbitrary content over to it and then that, listen, uh, that window can uh, choose whether to listen and act on those messages. Um, from a code point of view, um, from Tordio, uh, we just sort of uh, grab uh, a reference to the iframe, we get the content window, and then once we've got the window of that iframe, we just do post message and, um, and send it through. The, the second argument to post message there at the top um, is an important one. It's basically saying only send this message if the, uh, the, the source of the iframe matches the URL we've given. And that's um, pretty important because it would be very easy for all the JavaScript on the page to just uh, change the source of that iframe without you knowing to, to a, one of their pages and, and eavesdrop on the messages you're sending across. Um, so after we send the message, it's really easy to listen to it. Um, the, it just exposes a, a, a message, DOM event, that you can listen to in whichever way you normally listen to them. So add event listener uh, is here, but obviously um, for IEA to do uh, attach event and that kind of thing. Um, the event object's got the data property, so you just pull um, the data that's been sent off the uh, event object and you're ready to go. And it's that simple. Um, back in the other direction, we can just say um, window.parent because the, uh, the server iframe is embedded in the client side, and then send a reply back. The second argument there is a star because uh, that means um, send it back to whoever happens to be listening. Uh, the reason we need to do this in anywhere um, is because we don't necessarily know uh, what site is going to be uh, listening to the messages we send back. Uh, but we have ways of, uh, of um, locking that down that I'll explain further in the process. 